Okay, our next presenter has presented at multiple uh, 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 of the uh, energy science and technology uh, conferences and hasn't been here for a couple years, so we're uh, uh, very fortunate to uh, uh, have him be able to attend this year and uh, uh, present. Uh, Dr. Robert Herlich has a position of Distinguished Professor in Computer Science at the Graduate Center of the City University of New York. Um, after being on the university faculties for over half a century, he is retiring at the end of this summer and will be on emeritus status working with his remaining PhD students. He is known for his work in pattern recognition, machine learning, artificial intelligence, computer vision, image processing, and data science. He has published around 700 articles and book chapters in the scientific archival literature, and Google Scholar shows that he has over 77,000 citations to his papers. In 2016, he was the 15th recipient of the King Sun Fu Prize for his research. The prize is awarded every two years. A few years ago, he became interested in water and subtle energy. He has designed his new house and had it built in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. The house has, 1, 000, has a 1,000 square foot uh, laboratory instrumented with various analytical measuring instruments for his retirement work on water and subtle energy. Please help uh, welcome Dr. Robert Herlich. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Today we're going to talk about subtle energy and water. And it's going to be a talk that summarizes uh, a lot of the things that now are in the literature particularly re rela relating to quantum mechanics effects. The way I got interested in this was I began to see that all these things that prana, chi, od, organ, torsion force, life force, subtle energy was being talked about in a community of, actually it's a wide variance of the communities, and these are not in the textbooks. If you go to the classic textbooks or the modern textbooks, they're not there. And there is something in science that says, when you meet something that is not accounted for by the current paradigm, that that is actually most interesting. And various different things going from peer uh, prayer, dowsing, healing, remote healing, remote viewing, ESP, water properties included, magnetic effects in non-paramagnetic materials, gravity, nuclear decay rates, biogeometry, telepathy, there are more than these. But just to give you a sample, and, and some of these are actually very well known, and some of these are, are very well practiced. For example, dowsing has been practiced for a long, long time. All right, subtle energy. Uh, in a given setting, energy is the capability to produce a force that does work causing a change. And subtle energy cannot be, by the current paradigm, considered as an energy force. For example, telepathy does not generate enough energy to go from California to New York. Uh, same thing with healing. And there's no known mechanism, for example, on healing or telepathy, there's no known mechanism for the selectivity. So, subtle energy is not an energy force. Conscious intention, if you think about the, the force field or the, the field around the, the body, Conscious intention is not an energy force. And the question is, how can that which is not a force influence anything? And we know that conscious intention can structure and imprint water and crystals, and it does create a subtle structure. We also have literature that says consciousness is not local. All these things are crazy. 
Subtle energy is not necessarily local. Uh, Tiller talks about that subtle energy raises the gauge. Uh, Crone talks about subtle energy belonging to the world of subatomic particles capable of influencing the structure of combinations of these particles such as quark and subquarks inside the nucleus of atoms. <laughs> and we have against all of this the current science paradigm. And the current sa pa science paradigm is everything is physical, there's nothing beyond material physicality, physicality. everything physical involves matter and energy interactions, and theory involves mechanical explanation cause and effect or probability cause and effect and the theory has been enormously successful and it has an assumption that's typically not stated that no human quality of consciousness, tension, emotion, mind or spirit can significantly influence a well-designed macro experiment in physical reality. So here's how the talk is going to go. We'll begin with water and its structure, talking about geometric shapes and coherent domains. From there, we're going to go into Maxwell's equations. I have maybe five slides that I want to illustrate a pattern of thought. We'll talk about the Aronoff-Bohm effect, the Zimmerman papers that talk about transmitting the vector magnetic potential field, We'll have some work on the frequencies of water, some recent work, and we're going to try to answer this question of how can that which has no energy cause a change. So we'll begin with water and its structure. So liquid water, at least when I went to school, Liquid water was originally thought to be a collection of randomly moving H2O molecules, yes, in a more compact arrangement than it would be as if it were a steam. But it is now understood that the hydrogen atom with the oxygen atom bonds, they make and break, and once a hydrogen atom leaves, another takes its place, and the breaking time is about 800 uh, femtoseconds. And so if you look where this is, it's in the, in the spectrum. It's in the, uh, where it says the THZ gap going into the infrared and maybe a little bit into the near infrared, which is to the left of it. So let's go with the water geometric structure. We have pictures. Uh, here is a trimer, three, the red circle is oxygen, the gray circles are hydrogen, and uh, you do see uh, some of the hydrogen colored uh, green or blue, and it's just showing what happens in time that these things are not fixed. So if you look at the top row, upper left, the hydrogen uh, bond to that oxygen is at one angle. When you go to the center, it's already moving. You go to the last one, it's now in a completely different angular position. And these are the things that are happening with the uh, different transformations that are occurring actually in very short time. Here's a blown up picture of a tetrama for uh, four molecules, the oxygen is blue, the, the red ball would be the hydrogen, and the red uh, cylinder would be the, uh, the uh, bonding distance. Here's a pentamer, five, and here you see the angle of the five is around 108 degrees, but it's not flat. And so, for example, here's a pentamer which is actually showing the distance from the oxygen atom to the next oxygen atom of the H2O and you see that it has a, a, a triangular piece end that is actually tilted with respect to the plane. So they're not planar. And when we look at the oscillations, the water molecules oscillate between the ground state 
which is a relatively small EV, like around a half or something like that, and the excited state, which, tw which is 12.06 EV. Think about this. The ionization potential of the water, that is, how much voltage do you need to begin to ionize water, break it up into oxygen and hydrogen, is a little over 12 and a half volts. And H2O goes to uh, two hydrogens, which are positive, and two electrons, which are negative, and, and the oxygen. And so you have in the back of your mind that if the coherent domain water molecules oscillated at an energy of about a half of electron volt more, the water would split. If that would happen into the body, it would make the resulting hydrogen available to be burned in the body. Vector magnetic potential is coming from left and moving to right. The electrons are moving according to the arrow shown on the top, uh, <laughs> just the other way around than I showed before. They're going opposed and the bottom uh, going in alignment with it. And um, there's something interesting about the units of the vector magnetic potential. If you look at the, the dimension, the units, it is um, momentum per unit charge. Momentum is mass times velocity per unit charge. Well, that's interesting because we have one flowing this way, one flowing this way, and what's going to happen is that there's going to be a change in the momentum of the electron caused by the difference in the directions, opposing and aligned. So first I've got to explain the, the Pythagorean tune. This is the circle of fifths with people who have done anything in music typically know. As you move to the right, you're moving up by what's called a fifth in music, but which in harmonically means it's one and a half times the frequency of the, of the, um, of the fundamental. And as you go to the right, it's one and a half times, one and a half times all the way down. And the Pythagorean actually went a little more than halfway around. And then for the other thing, they went around the other way, going by a fourth. And if you go down by a fourth, you're going down two-thirds. So this just shows, for example, uh, tuning going up the circle of fifths. So they're shown here from hertz, through kilohertz, through megahertz, through gigahertz, through terahertz. These were nurturing frequencies, life-supporting frequencies. So the conclusion, the frequencies involve these ratios of 2 to 3 and 3 to 2 and their powers and you can go all the way to the very high octaves and it shows a close relationship between the frequencies of the surveyed water spectra. Pure water absorption spectra show precisely the same frequency pattern as found for the living cells and the biomolecules with the investigated range of actually UV to gigahertz. Uh, here's an illustration of a, a bubble uh, gradually arising up. Notice at the surface of the water you have the negative charges, below it the positive charges, and the bubble is moving up and it moving up and you, you can see then what happens. But the point to this was the negative charges on the surface tension. On the bursting of the bubbles, by the way, I suspect when those bubbles burst, it forms a longitudinal, you get a longitudinal spherical wave. The light comes in over here, gets reflected to here, gets reflected to the grating, and gets split up in here. And so if you have the light going through a water path here, then that influences what's going on, wh what's the light that's absorbed, for example, now begins to influence this, and you don't get a full grading, you get things that are selected. I think this is the final one I'm going to show. 
Uh, here we have a special uh, magnet configuration consisting of 12 sectors. And the left side of the sector is, let's say, north. The right side of the sector is south. And so that causes the B field to be sort of rotating round and round in it. When the B field rotates round and round in it, the A field is going up and down in the center, for example. We are thankful for all that you have created, for all that you have given, and for all your daily miracles. We are about, about to embark on a subtle energy experiment to search out and reveal some of your mysteries, mysteries about energy, consciousness, aliveness, and memory, mysteries about one consciousness communicating and influencing another consciousness, mysteries about how liquid and solid crystals are conscious, have memory.